Hi guys, Joe Abreu here. Hopefully you're enjoying the show. If you are, be sure to leave us a nice review and high star rating. Equally, as a growing podcast, it would be super great if you could recommend our show to friends, family or work colleagues. Whoever you think may be interested, please recommend and tell them about our show. We also have a Buy Joe a Coffee link in the description down below where you can support the show financially. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to The Joe Avery Show. Coming up, I talk to the producer and director of the brand new film Only Love Matters, Dr. Iram Qureshi and Dr. Cameron Qureshi. Plus, Peter Tilly is back with friends Alex Thornton Hill and Kemal Yildirim to talk about their new film, The Foreboding Fractured, which they have created together. Well, hello guys. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining me on the show today. We've got a really, really brilliant, we've got a packed show. We've got um, the producer and the director of the brand new film, Only Love Matters, Dr. Iram Qureshi and Dr. Cameron Qureshi coming round. We've also got the uh, big return of uh, of Peter Tilly, who's back with some friends, Alex Staunton Hill and uh, Kemal Yildirim, who are here to talk about their new film, The Foreboding Fractured, which they've created together some Really, really exciting news relating to uh, the Horror on Sea Film Festival, which is going to be uh, showing and, and premiering their, their new film. So that's really, really exciting. All of those details to follow. Um, it's been a pretty busy couple of weeks for me. Um, I was lucky enough um, that Iram and, and uh, Cameron kindly invited me to come along to the Only Love Matters premiere. So we were at the British Film Institute in London. It was a really, really uh, brilliant day. Uh, Really, really lovely to go and uh, just see it premiered for the first time. Uh, There was a nice Q&A with uh, with the cast and with them as well, which was really, really nice. Um, It's an interesting film. It explores the topic of intersex, which I think is a really, really important uh, topic to sort of uh, discuss and talk about because it's something that I didn't know too much about. So that's going to be really, really interesting. We're going to be talking to them later we've also got some thanks but no thanks uh coming up too which i know we all really really enjoy there were some huge huge films uh this month including stuff like uh the marvels and and the hunger games and obviously i tried to reach out and get those sorts of people uh to talk to me on the show but unfortunately uh they said no so we're going to be hearing uh from some of that and yeah, hopefully it's going to be a really, really fun day. Stay tuned and yeah, enjoy. Joey Bree. It is time for everyone's part of the show. Thanks, but no thanks. The part of the show where I read out an uh, email from a celebrity or their publicist who um, very politely declined my invite to appear and have an interview on the show. So this week we've only got one. Um, This is from the publicist of Iman Villani, who uh, plays a part in the Marvels, which of course is a huge, huge film, which is coming out this month. Uh, Very much looking forward to going and seeing that. Um, And anyway, yeah, the publicist basically says, Hi Joe, thank you for your interest in interviewing Iman Villani for your show. Unfortunately, she is not able to participate at this time. Iman received so many wonderful opportunities, however, it is impossible to accommodate all of them. Thanks so much for reaching out, and then the publicist's name. So there you go. Um, obviously, I'll endeavour to reach out to many, many more celebrities um, of uh, big upcoming feature films, and hopefully we'll have more luck in the future. But yeah, there you go. Sorry about that, guys. We couldn't get Iman on this week. Joey Bree. Coming up, we catch up with Peter Tilly and his friends Alex Staunton Hill and Kemal Yildirim about their upcoming film, The Foreboding Fractured, which will premiere at the Horror on Sea Film Festival. Very, very exciting. But before that, we're going to hear from the legends Dr. Iram Qureshi and Dr. Kamram Qureshi about their brand new film, Only Love Matters. Well, hello, Dr. Iram Qureshi, Dr. Kamran Qureshi. Uh, how are you both doing uh, and where in the world can we find you today? Hi, Joe. We are good. Thank you so much for your call today. Um, we are in London and, uh, of course, uh, enjoying the weather. It's not that cold. Uh, <laughs> and at the moment, it's, it's a bit evening, uh, but really uh, enjoying um 
being in office right now and about to finish the working day. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us um, and giving us your time. You've got a brand new movie. It's called Only Love Matters. Um, it's just premiered at several different venues, which is really, really exciting. Uh, what can you tell us about this film um, and how were you both involved? Um, Only Love Matters uh, is the first movie in cinema history, having lead intersex characters set in Britain. Uh, it was um, five, six years back when I was doing a research um, about my another movie. Um, and I decided to have an intersex character, um, a fashion designer uh, based in London, running his own uh, um, fashion company. And during research, I find find out that uh, there is there isn't any movie at all, um, even though British cinema is one of the oldest cinema in the world. And I was a bit shocked, and I was like, uh, "Let's do something like focusing on intersex only." So I made a proposal, and uh, Iram was doing PhD at that point uh, on a British woman director. Uh, and post uh, British woman era uh, from Brunel University, London. And she was like, why not you just submit uh, your research um, proposal to a few universities and do a proper research under the supervision of some, you know, proper research supervisors. And I was like, yes, uh, I can do that because I, at home I have, I used to have um a full-time person like Irim, who uh, who was two years um, already had that experience um, being doctoral researcher. Uh, so I submit my proposal on University of East Anglia. I had a quick chat with Professor Richard Han, and he was so happy, um, but he was a bit concerned that is it really um, you like to do a commercial movie as part of uh, mm -hmm. also a doctor research is it really possible would you be able to finish within four years and I was like uh, I did one um, 20 years back uh, around 15 20 years back uh, the movie called uh, Murad um, and that film we submitted on in Indus Telefilm Festival won first prize and cash prize as well and uh, that was <clears throat> 2002 and in 2003 I decided to make a 32-part TV series, which was Murad, and we got four nominations on that series as well. So the, the subject really isn't new for me, but the, the exciting thing for, for me was that uh, both previous projects were in, in Asian language, um, but uh, now I was looking at um, the first world countries, English-speaking countries, modern societies like Britain, like America, and and I'm curious that how these modern societies dealing uh, with these um, people born with intersex variations. Very good, very good. So you you, di you directed, is that right? Directed this film predominantly yeah, as well. I, yeah, I directed uh, this film and Irim produced this uh, Only Love Matters, and um, that was obviously a big advantage for me because uh, having Irim working with her for last 20 years. We have a great chemistry. And if you have a producer under one roof who understand well, you know, what else that, that a director can think of? Brilliant, amazing. Um, I mean, I was lucky enough to go and see this film last week. We all gathered at the BFI uh, for the premiere, which was really, really exciting, really lovely uh, to be involved in that. Um, it's a really, really amazing little film, and it's won many awards already, I believe. Um, how do you feel now that the film has been released and it's been received so so well? It has won over 30 awards now in um, festivals and um, during its um, uh, world premiere in Spain and UK premiere in B BFI as well. And we're so happy to have this type of um, you know, response from audience who watched it. I mean, so lovely comments, so lovely, um, you know, appraisals we've got. I mean, it's 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 overwhelming. And obviously, uh, we're really thankful for you to to be in in uh, in BFI uh, South Bank Cinema 
and witnessing obviously that that was the whole purpose to invite critics you know from the field uh, who are independent and obviously that was really the first meeting we had and it was a random invite to you as well without knowing you because inviting friends is far more easier from the media to get you favorable reviews and comments but uh, inviting an independent media who have um, their own opinion standing and they watch the, your movie and, and give a, an honest opinion that was the real um, target of course at this stage uh, that whatever they feel uh, however they receive the movie we really want uh, to give give us uh, the honest opinion of course and that is really matters for us bless you well it was an absolute pleasure to be involved and it is a really great film if you get the chance definitely go and see it um, as we've already kind of discussed uh, the film explores the topic of insects um, what does this subject mean to you guys personally? I know you've done a lot of research on it. Um, and what do you think people can learn about intersex as a result of watching uh, your film? Um, intersex subject is something me and Irem working for over 20 years now. Uh, and um, um, this subject is very near to our heart is because... Um, one of our main uh, topic which we have been working for uh, over two decades is working on mothers. So in this movie as well, we are bringing uh, an intersex mother who cannot produce a child, but uh, there is another character, uh, intersex character in this movie who is uh, an over testicular with uh, with a condition. Um, and um, um, through that character, we are trying to address one of the um, main issue, which is at the time of birth, when um, a medical establishments and medical doctors try to fix these babies by doing surgical interventions and removing their genitals and force them to join uh, these two main camps, male or female. So uh, making a female is far more easier for them, as this is a famous saying, uh, and we we did mention in the movie as well that you know um, digging a hole is far more easier than to build a pole. So meaning uh, creating uh, or making a, a, a female body is is far more easier for medical doctors or surgeons instead of uh, making a boy. So the, mostly you will see these intersex babies um, living as as female. But uh, later on, they realized that, you know, probably uh, th this is not what uh, they meant to be. So uh, uh, in, in my opinion, what me and Irim and a lot of other researchers and uh, in fact, the United Nations also uh, speaking about uh, these harmful surgeries and what we are saying that uh, let these babies live uh, without these uh, in um, surgical interventions and um, let them um, uh, to reach probably uh, adulthood or at least the age where they will be able to decide about their bodies instead of uh, doctors or parents are making decisions on their behalf and uh, these babies wouldn't be able to get their genitals back one because once these genitals are removed they are they are removed and they are uh, on um, these um, therapies, medical therapies, um, tablets or injections all over their life, which they don't have to. They are perfect human beings like anyone else, and they have the right to live um, and decide about their bodies when they'll be able to. So that is one of the main, obviously, um, uh, purpose um, of um, one of the main elements which we are trying to establish, but also what we are saying that um, they have the right to choose about their partners as well, like love partners, you know, and um, obviously um, we are also discussing about uh, discrimination in sports as one of the scene where um, uh, one of the main intersex characters, she argue with um, the uh, within the college that uh, she wanted to be in a female volleyball team uh, but um, um, the, the person uh, at the college uh, he was saying that you cannot play within the female team and then she asked that can I can that means can I 
join a male team and he said that i didn't say that so that means what she's the character uh, was saying that that means she haven't got the place in female or male team then what what she she needs to do so these are um i mean discrimination in sports discrimination in education and there are other fields workplace where they are constantly fe- facing these discriminations and united nation nowadays the the um, instructing uh, the member of states uh, to do the necessary legislation uh, to take care of these intersex rights, human rights, in fact, and um, give them an equal um, chance to live and 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 treat. You know, brilliant. Um, I'm just interested uh, to know: um, Have you shown the film to individuals that are? actually intersex and um do you know what well i mean have you had any feedback uh from that group of people um about the film or not yet okay uh during the research uh it was part of my uh, doctoral study to approach intersex organizations intersex individuals uh, intersex experts take them on board uh my script was um before uh, taking the script into a production, I send my script to a, one of the intersex organization uh, to read a, read the script and understand and guide me if there is anything which needs to be you know improved. So one of the organization um, uh, who suggested uh, initially the movie's name was Blind Pouch, which is a technical uh, terminology used in medical uh, profession uh, for w- one variation of uh, intersex people. And uh, the suggestion was not to probably use this name uh, and uh, maybe some intersex individual may not, um, you know, um, perceive uh, this title favorably. So later on, after one week, we had a discussion and come up with this title, which is Only Love Matters. And they were so happy to have this uh, title and obviously uh, the title says itself that you know the love matters it is the love which we really need to take care of and obviously uh, um, during the screening it was open um, uh, call Uh, in fact um, a few tickets few free tickets were offered to anyone whoever um, from intersex community and they like to to come and see at BFI South Bank, and same offer we we give it to uh, the intersex uh, people uh, um, for uh, to work in the crew and also uh, to work as an actor. So obviously, a um, lot of uh, intersex people they don't want to share uh, the information and they are not o- openly um, expressing themselves. Um, or identify themselves as an intersex. Um, so uh, we do have a um, uh, um, member who acted and uh, uh, did one of the roles, but obviously uh, when you see movies website, you wouldn't uh, notice or there, there isn't anything which you will see. In fact, on the BFI one, you were there and there was one character who was... Uh, originally an intersex and she was speaking about uh, some intersex issues but uh, I bet you wouldn't notice that who was that individual I wouldn't know <laughs> no I would not have a clue <laughs> yeah and that that was the really um, I mean um, one of the element which uh, Irim and myself taking care of that we are not um, you know um, projecting uh, um, some in, uh, intersex individual f- for the sake of you know uh, showing their identity when they they are not comfortable with, and that's obviously their their, their own choice, and we do respect um, about their choices. And this is exactly what we're going to do in future as well. Right now, um, um, we are um, the screening. The next screening is in uh, Southampton Film Week, and it's it's a free tickets. Um, uh, it's on a movie's website right now. People can go and book. Obviously, same offer we did in um, BFI London premiere. 
And we really would love to have film critics, intersex people, or the community, uh, people from, uh, you know, uh, LGBT probably, um, um, you know, umbrella. Although this movie is not about LGBT and there is no um, LGBT element um, 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 or the characters in the movie, but we did discuss uh, slightly uh, this um, LGBT um, term and we did uh, try to explain that you know all the intersex people they are they are not um, identify themselves under the umbrella of LGBT but there are individuals like males or female um, bodies similarly intersex bodies also uh, identify them uh, some of the individuals identify under the umbrella of uh, LGBT, but not all of them. That that is something which we established. I think I'm speaking too much. Probably <laughs> next, I'm gonna pass on to Iram. Otherwise, people will be thinking that you know I'm <laughs> the show. Iram is here. I promise she can have the next question. There you go. Unless you want to add anything more to that one, Iram. <laughs> um, no, I think um, it's it's yeah. We we had uh, like. He said that we had the script actually sent to an intersex organization. They read the script and they gave us the feedback as well. Um, it was um, authenticated by them that the, all the information that's going out in the script is correct. I mean, there was nothing which is, you know, just made up. So uh, we did take care of that. And we did put the call out as well for the guests. Now, there were people, I don't know if somebody actually came and went because we didn't get a chance to say hello to everyone. I mean, there were many people who saw that. Yeah. I'm going to add one more thing that uh, four full professors, uh, senior professors in the UK, they, they examine all the research Two, three were from University of East Anglia, one from University of Ex Exeter, and um, uh, my all the work is all documented, all the research about this movie, and it's in uh, British Library already. And uh, I got a doctorate degree uh, on oh, this. Congratulations! Uh, oh, Good. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So obviously, um, this is really one of the top of the top agenda. Uh, and I'm, I'm, for your viewers, probably it's, it's a unique case that a, a professional director who decided to do a proper research under the supervision of, uh, um, you know, one of the renowned university, which is University of East Anglia, uh, and the university is one of the top 200 universities in the world. It has its own um, excellent reputation about, you know, the, the, uh, when it comes to research. So obviously, these these are really uh, important matters which we really take care of, and uh, it's all documented. Very good. Um, obviously, making an independent film can be really, really tough sometimes. Uh, what were some of these challenges that you faced um, as a result of making this film, and how were you able to overcome them? Do you love newly released films and luxury big cinematic experiences? Then Odeon Cinema is perfect for you. Odeon is the largest and best known cinema chain in the UK and Ireland so there is bound to be one close to you. Odeon also offers several membership schemes to give you the personalised cinematic experience you want with exclusive rewards, offers and content tailored to your needs. Simply click the link in the description to get started and book your ultimate cinematic experience today. The first challenge was financing the film, which was um, a really hard task. And um, the subject is basically, um, you know, it, it's taken as a taboo subject anyways. And um, because the previous record of the films that were made, most of them were made in US and one was made in Australia. But all the six films that were made in US did not have a really, um, you know, a re good record on the box office. So perhaps the producers do not, um, or the production companies, um, they were not very comfortable with funding or financing this film because they thought uh, perhaps it, it, it won't give them any commercial response you know so um, it was a really hard task and we tried we knocked so many doors we went we approached most of the big organizations 
but um, it wasn't a success at that time. So we had to um, remortgage a house. We had to take out some bank loans. We had to ask favors from uh, people, um, from our friends, family friends and things. And, um, you know, so what happened was actually we applied for bank loans and we were all, you know, doing all the casting. And um, after all the preparation, it was only one week left until the shoot and we were so <laughs> worried that there was no money actually until that time and then we thought perhaps it's not gonna happen I mean it it might get cancelled because we didn't have enough money to go on shoot the petty cash and um, just one week to the shoot I checked the company bank account for some reason and I found there was money in it already because the bank had approved a loan and it we didn't get any email or any any sort of notification um and i just screamed <laughs> you know and it was it was a funny moment as well for us but um it, it was like some guardian angel guardian um, angel was you know on top of her head who was it who was actually helping us and um so we we um, got some money and we we made it in in, in a low budget anyways um but still we we I mean, try their best to do whatever we can, you know, in our limited resources. The problem is uh, movie uh, has over 40 locations, so many extras, over 300 collaborations uh, from all over the world. So the, the subject, the kind of a story I knitted, um, and obviously the screenplay um, was by uh, Yanis Elefres, uh, who's a um, very good friend of mine professional screenwriter, uh, professional screenwriter, award-winning screenwriter. Uh, but um, arranging all, all of these things, like uh, filming in the UK and going uh, abroad um, in uh, the great Indian desert on the border of India and Pakistan, um, where we selected over six, six villages. Um, there was festival involved. There were travel involved from you know main cities to the remote villages so it it all cost money of course and we really didn't want to compromise we use drones we use crane we use tracks we use every possible you know gadgets or or elements which can enhance the quality because one of the main element or uh, or one of the main tasks was that to bake into the um, mainstream um, film uh, industry with this film so i just don't want to give impression uh, like previous film that uh, these type of films can only be you know um and independent film and um you can only release on online um, some platforms and you you cannot reach to uh, cinemas and uh, look we were one of the um, famous uh, venue already uh, screen at BFI, you know, yeah. bank, which was a really exciting moment and for all of us. And, and obviously it's a pride moment. And um, last week we had a screening in uh, uh, Ronald University London and the kind of, um, you know, associate um, um, Dean, um, he commented after watching the movie. And that was my really our first uh, meeting like, like yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, we, we were so happy and glad the kind of words he used and his interviews on obviously on official websites, uh, movies official website. So it, it's really a great uh, moment for us that after receiving all of these um, reception from public. So in Spain, um, when I, I was there for world premiere and right after the movie, I stood up and when people were clapping and I said, look, I'm the director because I was, you know, this is really a first time <laughs> for me. People were clapping for my for my film and I was so emotional. And yeah. I said, uh, two, 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 three women were crying at that time. And I was like, uh, I'm, can I uh, record these events and can I have your, um, you know, views? And they kindly let me record their, their emotions and they express themselves in front of the camera. And all, all of these um, comments, interviews are on the website. And th this is really our asset now and what we have achieved so far. We might not have that success, successful commercial success at this point, but uh, we are so happy that we just signed last week 
um, a distribution deal uh, already. And uh, we are in a process of delivering all the material and probably very soon um, um, we, uh, audience will see film in cinemas all over the world and later on, of course, on uh, mainstream uh, streaming platforms. Very good. Um, just worth mentioning, the cinematography throughout the film is incredible. I did particularly enjoy those Indian uh, scenes. They were, yeah, really, really amazing. Um, Thank you. And also the the cast, um, some of them first acting, proper acting jobs, wasn't it, for some of them? And they did an incredible job as well. All four main leads are probably, they they were doing their first feature film. And what that was a big, big task, obviously. A um, bit risky at, at time, of course, for production companies. And probably uh, this is one of the main uh, hurdle uh, we faced last one year that um, that we haven't got the big name in the movie. Big name as in the star, a sellable name. But uh, comparing the actors, what we have, like Matt Kenny or George Simpson or Emma or Sarah, uh, Kainas, um, Patrick, Angela, all of these are brilliant actors and uh, Champ Amy, you know, so uh, we were so blessed. They all are trained actor. They went to a, you know, acting schools, and we can clearly see the passion, the body language, the gestures and posture. And we got a um, best acting award as well for Sarah from Vancouver um, Film Festival. Amazing, amazing! Yeah, it's such a great film. Definitely go and see it if you can. We're just about out of time. Uh, before we go, do you guys have any socials or, or future projects or, or anything to do with the film that you might like uh, to promote further to our listeners at this point? So um, we are working on uh, one of the period drama uh, called Elsie Ingalls, A Woman with a Torch. Again, we are bringing a mother. Uh, Irem was on uh, location wreck in Serbia. She met Serbian king. She met... Uh, um, British ambassador. She had a very strong support network now in Scotland and and um, in Serbia. So um, the lady Elsie Ingalls, she was um, one of the pioneer uh, women who um, um, was the founder of Scottish Women Hospital. It's a great story. Um, she was only um, she born in India uh, from Scottish parents, and on the way back. Uh, to Scotland when she was only six or seven years of age uh, during her journey on the ship uh, when a, a doctor interacted with her uh, that six years old Elsie uh, asking that what you want to be and she was like I want to be a doctor and that doctor the male doctor laughed and he said that women can only best be uh, a nurse they, they, they can't be a doctor so later on, she became a surgeon. She um, she took over fifteen hundred women to to, to to the war front, and obviously, um, Irem also um, Irem's PhD was on uh, again on the uh, one of the pioneer British women director called Wendy Toy, and she Irem is writing at the moment a book for Manchester University Press um, on women directors. So these are the two great stories about two great women, which is. Um, obviously a pride of um, uh, of a British nation and of course we really want to uh, take these stories into a life uh, these, these both are period dramas and um, in fact Elsie we are working on both aspects we got six episode series television series and also um, um, a cinema movie version as well so we are planning to release on cinema first and then release as a television series, you know, a lengthy, lengthy version uh, to, ha to have more detail um, um, events and the characters of, of from the real life. And obviously some, some characters will be fictional. Brilliant, brilliant. Sounds uh, really, really exciting. And we look forward to hearing more very soon. Dr. Aram, Dr. Cameron, thank you so much for your time and for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be on your show. It's a great pleasure. Thank you so much for having us. Joey Bree. It is time to meet my next guest of the day. Returning once again, for the third time I believe, is the legendary Peter Tilly. 
He's here with his friends Alex Thornton Hill and Kemal Yildiraz to talk about their new film, The Foreboding Fractured. Well, hello, Alex Thornton Hill, Kemal Yildirim, and uh, welcome back, Peter Tilly. How are you all doing today, and where in the world can we find you? I am very well, thank you. This is Kamal. Thank you so much for having me on. And you can find me in Northamptonshire, England. I know, yeah, it's, it's awesome to be here. I'm currently in uh, Bristol, not quite London, but still. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Thank you for having me on yet again. Um, and I am from London. Beautiful. Well, obviously, uh, we're here to talk about your new film, The Foreboding Fractured. Uh, what can you guys uh, tell us about this film and how were each of you involved? Well, foreboding fractured. Um, I was contacted by Alex um, and Peter about getting involved probably about two and a half weeks before we went into production. Goodness <laughs> me. So, so, yeah. So it was, it was a really quick turnaround. Um, and I, I'm, I'm basically the cinematographer, right? Uh, sorry, not writer. Sorry, Alex. Uh, cinematographer, <laughs> director, and uh, <laughs> just nicked your credit there. And, uh, and also the editor on the project. Yeah, so uh, I'm a. Uh, I kind of got a message from uh, from Peter. What was it? It was either a message or we we were just chatting, and he kind of said that he wanted to make this uh, horror film, um, and he wanted it to be nice and simple. It did not turn out to be simple because uh, it, it's me. I don't. I don't do simple. Um, but yeah, I'm the uh, cinematographer. I mean, uh, writer. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I came on as the uh, uh, the writer, um, and then Peter asked if I wanted to play one of the characters. I went, yeah, sure, why not? Um, and yeah, the rest is history, I suppose. I had about a month to prep it all, and um, got that first draft in something like four hours after a conversation it was really 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 quick um so yeah tired after a busy day or planning a big celebration why not unwind and celebrate with wine from majestic uk majestic offer a wide range of great value wines champagnes beers and ciders so whatever your tipple there is something for everyone Simply click the link in the description, order in line and collect from your local Majestic store or select local delivery at checkout. Please drink responsibly. That's fine. Um, hello, I'm Peter. I'm the cinematographer and writer. Oh, sorry, no, that's taken. <laughs> um, <laughs> I am the producer and co-creator on this project. Um, as well as Alex, I've also got a leading role in the film um but yeah i mean as it, as alex just said really this has just been an absolute crazy experience everything's been within a really tight time span really um i went to alex sort of the end of june saying how i wanted to make like a teen horror flick as i've always wanted to and saying to him that i wanted to get into the horror and see film festival with the deadline for submissions being at the start of september so, yeah, definitely gave Alex and Kamel a nice challenge on that one, um, which <laughs> thankfully has has worked out. Really good. Um, and do any of you have any particular standout moments from the film uh, without giving too much away um, that our listeners can potentially look forward to when they go and see it? Yeah, for me, uh, for me, the standout on the film is the camaraderie between the characters and the, um, obviously coming from a directing perspective, just just the way that the actors all really came together to create a very realistic group of people that are on the cusp of that kind of change in life where you're you know you're at university you're just about to go into proper adulthood so that, and and the way that the actors kind of captured that was i thought really really good yeah um i mean there th there are so many moments uh on set and also sort of off of it that really stand out um, but I'll have to go with probably what is in our promotional material more than anything is the campfire. Um, there's just something so lovely about that scene, um, going from, you know, page to actuality 
um, was really, really cool. And just working alongside everyone, I guess. Like, everyone was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, they all brought it, which is brilliant. Yeah, I mean, it was a real tough shoot. We only had sort of three days on the set. Um, but it was an amazing experience how everyone pulled together. And I think I agree with Kamal and Alex. But I think what I'm really excited for is the location as well. We've got a really good location that just brings this well to life. And seeing the characters in this location of what happens within the story is really going to be something quite good to see on screen, actually. Amazing. Well, Peter and Alex, as you've both just said, uh, you've obviously been really, really involved with this film. Um, how did you find the process of writing, producing um, and creating this film together? Ooh, um, yeah, it, it was definitely an experience, 100%. Um, I, I don't usually, well, I, Peter took definitely far more of a producer role than I did. If anything, I was sort of there to make sure he didn't lose his marbles whilst, <laughs> you know, <laughs> essentially going through this whole month of like, where's location, we need to get cast and, you know, all, every little moving piece. Um, I suppose, best way to put it, it it was hectic, but it was really exciting. You know, it's a new project and usually they go on for, you know, months and months and you start kind of going, oh, when is this going to be done? But with this one, it was just, you know, full speed ahead and it really, really kept you on your toes. And I think I, think I definitely loved that part of it 100%. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I mean, we had deadlines to meet, so it was literally all or nothing. If we did not meet those deadlines, this film wouldn't have happened in the time that we wanted to, at least. Um, but I mean, this was my first time producing. I've never produced before, so I certainly learned a lot in such little time. Um, I was just going with the process, just figuring it out along the way, and we must have secured the location literally a week before filming so we got really really lucky on that um the casting process was done about a month beforehand as well so everything was so last minute but i'm just thankful that we put the hard work in and, and got the results we wanted really because it couldn't have been any better than than what i wanted it to be really with that the cast and the location that we got really good uh the two of you also feature as you've said um as part of the cast on this film um, how did you find the balance of acting on the screen kind of entwined with your work behind the scenes as well? Um, and did this present any challenges? Um, I mean, I kind of got used to it. It's, it's not the first time I've, you know, either written or co-written something and then have to act it. Um, it just means you kind of go in with a, a slightly different mindset and a slightly different method just to make sure that when you're not in that moment when you're not playing the character you have this other part of your brain sort of going okay we need to do this this and this then when the camera's rolling it's like bam you have to be that character you've got to really really be in it um and it's it's brilliant i mean watching peter go from producer to actor was insane there are so many scenes where he really really brings the character of Aaron to life and that's you know with all the stuff having behind the scenes he's still able to achieve that which is absolutely incredible yeah thank you for that Alex I mean same goes for you as well because you worked heavily behind the scenes and then this transition into the character of Connor and I thought you'd done an absolutely fantastic job it's certainly not easy. Um, it's certainly a challenge. This was a new experience for me because primarily I'm an actor. So then to come on board with this and be in that producer mindset and making sure that all the cast and crew are happy along with making sure that things are running smoothly as well as focusing on on the character, which had a lot of lines there as well, to have that in my mind um, <laughs> was certainly a challenge. But I'm, like I said, I'm happy with the results that we got. I'm really proud of the whole cast and crew because everyone just done a fantastic job and Kamal certainly helped to get us through a lot with it on set with his experience as a director as well and I'm just so thankful we had that support by our side for myself as well learning this whole producer duty uh, for the first time really. Amazing and we're coming on to Kamal now uh, you obviously also 
um, took on many roles uh, within this project. Um, how did you find this experience? Overall, I thought the experience was incredible. These two, you know, these two first time producers uh, showed, you know, an aptitude to to producing and they're natural producers. You know, they're being really humble right now, but they're natural producers and they're doing what actors really should do, in my opinion, is creating content that they themselves can get produced. And that that to me is um, it's a fundamental part of their growth as actors and producers. And it was to me, it was it was a it was a blast, really. I mean, we, you know, I'm, I'm kind of sugarcoating how hard the production was because the production was actually quite difficult on set because we had a torrential thunderstorm. Uh, mm -hmm. We were dealing with generators and, and and what what we in the industry call hot lights. So, you know, th th these are not LED lights. These are big, you know, 2K lights and massive lights that we we're lighting scenes with. And it was very tricky and we didn't have a big crew. But what we did have was a really dedicated crew. And it's very, I'd like to say the indie scene was always like this, but unfortunately it isn't. But we had a very dedicated cast and crew that really got behind and the, behind the whole project. And to be honest, we, we just worked as a unit really, really well. And just to have those people around me to help me then, it just made my job a lot easier as cinematographer and, and director. And it, it really was a fun a really fun experience and I f I'm really happy with the end result I think the guys have done a fantastic job and the future's bright for these two definitely mm -hmm. is very good um as you've already all said uh, the project obviously was hatched very very recently um what kind of challenges uh, were presented uh, during the film I know we've kind of touched on a few um but um what were some of these issues and how were you able to overcome these in such a short space of time um try not to get electrocuted in the rain with lights is, <laughs> was one of the things <laughs> that was a bit of a challenge um yeah i mean we had we had various production issues that usually go wrong in indie films because obviously with an indie film we didn't have a massive crew you know, I, I pretty much was the camera department by myself as well as directing it. So it was a very, very small unit. So a lot of production challenges was, you know, pretty typical to indie, indie films where something would happen. Like, for example, on the first major night, our generator decided to not work, which meant that we couldn't power any of the lights. And um, as a crew, we all managed to get together and make that work. You know, we, we, we figured out an alternative and we made it work and the producers you know, Alex and Peter pulled it out the bag the next day to get a new generator. It's these type of things that, you know, as producers that, you know, Peter alluded to that he had to learn on the job, but, you know, we all rose to it and, you know, and massive shout out to the, to the sound department and the makeup, you know, they, they really pulled in more than they do on their usual jobs. They all mustered together and, and we all worked together really hard. And, and it was a really strong little unit. And like Peter said, we only had three days and, and we, we ended up with a twenty, nearly a twenty-five minute film. That's pretty good going. The the generators were um was we I mean for every day it was always the damn generator. It was always something <laughs> to do with the generator. Um, because the the first day, the one that we initially had, the the power just wasn't right for everything. It it just wouldn't work. So Kamal um and one of our actresses um decided yeah we're gonna light a massive bonfire just to sort you know a scene out and you know what it turns out actually wonderful um and then the second one somehow the petrol in the generator was getting diluted by the rain so then it was like right okay the the four hours of shooting we should have has now turned into an hour that's fun you know um and there's there's definitely a moment where you kind of go, oh no, am I going to be able to, you know, finish this film or what are we going to do? What changes can we do on the fly? Um, like a moment that sticks in my head so much and not because it's bad, but because I think it was, it was sort of a moment where myself, Kamal and Peter all just kind of went, okay, yeah, we got to be quick. Um, and we're just like in one of the locations, just trying to figure out positioning and everything just to sort it all out. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's it's like Kamau said, it's it's learning on the job, you know, 
no shoot, no matter what budget, goes as straightforward as you would hope. It never does. Um, but the fact that we were able to pull something out from this, something that's generally really good, um, is absolutely amazing. And yet again, that that does come down to a dedicated team, you know? I mean, our PA, um, she was insane, you know? Like she was a little ninja. She could go from one place to another, just knowing exactly what she had to do. You didn't have to say anything. She was just there. Absolutely brilliant. We did name her Ninja. That's how good she was. Yeah, she, she, Ninja she, Nico. Yeah, yeah, Ninja Nico. She was <laughs> she was incredible. Again, a create you know a really young, you know filmmaker. You know, soon to be filmmaker herself. You know, it's just incredible, absolutely incredible dedication to make sure we got what we needed. So you know, I can't be happier with with the people that worked on the film. They were fantastic. I think we got really lucky with the team we had because, again, so many of these people came on board last minute. I think Bella was the last one to come on board. Must have mm. actually been a couple of days beforehand because our original makeup artist um, wasn't able to come in the end. So we had to quickly recruit another makeup artist last minute and Bella stepped in. And the amount of dedication that every individual person on that team put in for what was such a tough shoot. I mean, we really battled with conditions on this. You could probably have made a feature length documentary of behind the scenes and that would be a horror film itself <laughs> um, with, with the weather conditions and the generator but we just all pulled together as a team like the guy said and we really got through it and I'm really impressed with the results we've got out of this film um, we had such high, high aspirations for it and yeah I'm just I'm really pleased to be honest um, I'm happy with what we've got yeah, and 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 you know, just to finish that off, I, that's what I love about the indie film scene is, is that tenacity to to keep going even though everything's working against you, and it, for that end goal and you know to get that script to the screen and that's the love that we all have for what we do and no matter what anything you know the nature or the elements throw at us, we just kind of try our best to to rise to that challenge and and get it done and we did, you know, so really happy. <laughs> I was just going to say as well, I think some of it was actually a blessing in disguise, surprisingly, because that lighting we got with the campfire, originally we was going to have the generator for lighting, but that lighting for the campfire was incredible and that really lit the scene well, um, just added to the nature of it, along with the rain, as, as tough yeah. as that was in those freezing conditions on this wild remote site on a farm, um, it worked really well. Yeah, it worked, yeah. It worked so well that we got embers stuck in the middle of our forehead. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's what it's about isn't it in the indie indie film scene is you've got to turn a you know a, a potential disaster into something that can actually benefit and you know in my years of experience because you probably can't tell on audio but I'm a lot older than the other two so I've got a bit a bit more experience and you know it's about turning those bad moments into 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 those nuggets of gold and that's what we did and you know and everyone you know, should really, I take my hat off to all of them because they all rose to that challenge. Amazing. Uh, Peter, you've spoken uh, in the past about your desire, forgive me if I'm wrong, but to create a teen horror flick. Um, hopefully you fulfilled that dream uh, through the creation of this film. Um, where did this idea kind of come from in the first place? Um, and how do you feel now that you've made this dream kind of become a reality? Yeah, I mean, it's quite surreal because never have I thought this would happen or has turned into what this film has become. Obviously, yeah, originally I went to Alex hoping to make something a bit more of a simple idea. And that was purely because of, of the deadline, knowing that we didn't have a lot of time then until getting something into Horror and Sea Film Festival. Um, I attended that festival for the first time this year. And obviously now going back there in January, um, by the time this podcast releases, the announcement will be out there that this has got into the Horror and Sea Film Festival. But going back with these guys will be incredible feeling to showcase this film. Um, but I mean, what Alex has created with the script, with the character Swift as well, is just amazing. Um, I knew he would be the right person to handle this when I went to him and then just seeing what Kamal has brought to life with his amazing cinematography skills is just, like I said, I, I couldn't have asked for a better team. I think every single person in each department really brought their A game. Amazing. Um, you've all been working together for some time now. 
Um, just from the general talk, I get the feeling you all uh, got on quite well. Um, but um, but how was life on the set? And are there any particularly sort of funny stories um, or anecdotes that you could recall from your time making this film together? Oh, funny stories, loads. Um, <laughs> getting stuck in the mud with a camera. <laughs> <laughs> try, 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 trying to uh because the mud was literally up up to over our ankles uh that's how bad the mud was so yeah i mean what I, I, for me the standout moment was actually one of the what could have been one of the worst moments where we had a lot of issues you know as we've mentioned with the generator and we were having to film a pivotal moment in the film towards the end of the film like the, the crux of the film and we knew we only had a limited amount of time before the generator died on us and we and myself Alex and uh, and Peter in that barn it could have all went wrong where we had this conversation and we could have all panicked and we could have all lost our minds but we all kind of came together and this is what I actually really love about working with Alex and Peter is that they know that the end result and the film is more important than what's written on the page and, and 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 our own feelings about the story and and they knew that we needed to make changes in order to that for that to happen so we, and and Alex Alex had to make some very key changes to his script at that particular point and he took it and we you know we worked together and really rounded that off and that conversation in the barn for me cemented that these two these two young filmmakers are you know the future of indie british indie film looks good if there's producers and actors like this around because they just really took to that challenge and we turned the script and we made it i think in some ways a little bit better and not that alex's script wasn't already amazing because it was but we, we ended up having to turn that bad situation into a better situation and i think we did i mean thank you kamal for uh you know basically singing myself and peter's praises that means an awful lot um it's in the post yeah yeah, yeah. Um, oh god, a, a really, 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 really funny, funny moment. There's one that sticks with me, um, mainly because I thought I was saying it internally, and it was one of those moments where you catch yourself saying it externally. Um, but there's a, a, a scene where Kamal has to get really, really, really close to my face, um, so that you can really see my eyes clearly and for some reason my the one thing I said was oh I'm so sorry I have to take a look at my chocolate button eyes I hope they're not distracting <laughs> and it, it became a sort of a thing to the PA Nico where she just started calling me buttons <laughs> <laughs> so for like the rest of the set it, it felt like this little ninja just swallowed me around and just going buttons and then just like fleeing it was oh it's mad <laughs> I, th I, th I think hysteria probably set in by that point so yeah, <laughs> 100 yeah. Oh, very good very good think, peter um, anything to add <laughs> yeah i think a key moment for me i mean there was a lot of moments on that set i think we all went mad by the end of that shoot um but I think a key moment for me was when we were shooting a scene at the beginning of the film and uh, something happened to my character. And I mean, this is just credit to Olivia's acting. He plays Laura and she's absolutely a fantastic actress. And it was just a look that she gave. And then when we completed that shot, everyone just burst into laughter because <laughs> it's just so funny. And it was like those little moments like, you know what? We're making movie magic here. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it's like to be on set. That was, that was fun for me. Very good, very good. Um, we've kind of already touched on it. You do all have some very exciting news uh, regarding this film and its release. Uh, would you mind announcing this to our audience now? Yes. So, The Foreboding Fractured is the new title of the film. It was once known as The Foreboding. We can confirm that this is the new title now. And we are happy to announce that the Foreboding Factured will have its world premiere at the Horror and Sea Film Festival in Southend on the 20th of January 2024, screening at Half Five. Um, tickets will become available on the Horror and Sea website as of this Tuesday, the 31st, which is when the official announcement will go out. So if you like the sound of our film, please buy a ticket and come and support us. Very good. There you if go. Yeah, go on, go on. I just want to step in and say something about Horror on Sea Festival because it 
you know, it, it was recently last year it was featured on BBC mainstream news talking about how South End had become like the Riviera of horror horror films and for an indie filmmaker it's so important to get your work seen by an audience to get that reaction from an audience and horror on sea is for me the pinnacle of uk festivals because it's all about the film and the filmmakers and there's this real buzz around that festival and it's growing year on year and paul cosgrove who's who's the the main man at that festival is just such a champion of indie film so any indie filmmakers out there that want to get films in put you know get get your films in horror on sea because it's such an amazing film festival um right um and uh, up until until then um how can our audience keep up to date on all things uh the foreboding fractured uh so you can follow the official account for the film which is on instagram and that's the foreboding official so you can stay up to date on all the latest news announcement which will be released via this page very good uh we're just about out of time uh before we go do you guys have any socials um and future projects that you might like to plug um yeah i mean i've i'm working on about three different feature films at the moment i'm trying to get off the ground myself peter and and alex are you know toying with some ideas in the background as well because i think we've realized that we really like working together and i'm kind of forcing them into another project <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so there's always stuff on in socials if anyone wants to check out some of my stuff they can go to chemical underscore film at instagram and on twitter and you can find me on there or should I say X? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose the only thing I really have to sort of plug on my end uh, is really the the band who have uh, recently done the, uh, uh, the soundtrack, which consists of myself and Olivia Bennett, who actually plays Lauren in the film. Um, and yeah, once the uh, Insta is actually done, it's, it'll be called Twin Pinnacle um, and we'll be, you know, sort of showing what we did in the studio. Um, so, yeah, that's my little my little plug there. Um, yeah, I was just going to say stay tuned on all things foreboding fractured because we've got a lot coming out um, in the next couple of months leading up to the film's release. So you guys will certainly be treated on that one. Um, but, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter or, as I say, X now missing twitter um <laughs> that is peter tilly 20 and you can find me on instagram as well which is tilly t-i-double-l-e-y dot peter very nice the foreboding fractured premieres at the horror on seat film festival 2024 on january the 20th at 5 30 p.m alex kamal peter thank you so much for joining me today thank you very much thanks for your time yeah thank you so much for uh for having us it's been an absolute pleasure Thank you, Joe, as always. Always great to be back. Joey Bree. A big thank you to all of my guests and to you guys for joining me today on the Joe Avery Show. Have you clicked that follow button on all of our socials? If not, you're missing out. Just look up at the Joe Avery Show on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Also, a reminder that you can support the show by clicking the support show and buy Joe a coffee link in the descriptions down below. Catch you soon.